Hello everyone, welcome back to another VTOL VR tutorial. Today I'll be showing you the exciting new features coming in 1.8 pertaining to the new radar and the new jammer module. So when you first turn on the radio in the new update, it should look pretty similar to what we're used to with a few minor changes. First being this 23 next to this enemy here. That indicates it's at 23,000 feet. You can click on it like normal and see under A for angels it is 23, meaning it's at 23,000 feet. Other than that, the enemies are not changed. The other thing you'll notice is this bar with this moving indicator on the left. That is indicating the new change to the radar and how it functions. So in the previous update, it worked like a cone to where it would kind of scan horizontally like the entire area. Now it scans in rows, so it'll do rows like this. And it moves up each row individually as it goes through automatically. And what that means is it scans the lower area of the sky and it slowly goes up the remainder of the sky kind of up like this which means that if someone's up at 50,000 feet up here it might take two or three seconds for you to see them if you're starting down here at the bottom but it runs through automatically and it's pretty quick but you may notice some slight um, delays in typical feedback next if we go into the options you'll see there are three radar options you have PPI FOV mode and cursor speed we'll do cursor speed first because it is the easiest to display and it is just the speed at which your green two-line cursor moves. This is at 40 at the lowest. If we bump it up to 100, you see it moves much faster. 60 is the default, but now it's configurable and you can change it. The next setting, we'll talk about display. So PPI mode is the default mode, the one we're used to. You can set it to B-scope, and now it looks like this. Now as far as I can tell, it is functionally the same as the other mode. Uh, it's just it's a square instead of a cone, but it still scans left to right. You still see the normal indicators here, and you see everything else. You can lock on. Nothing else is different. You can still move everything around. Again, nothing is different as far as I can tell. If I'm wrong about that, please leave a comment. Now switching back to PPI mode, we'll talk about the SLU mode of F the FOV. So this mode has to do with the left indicator. So now in SLU mode, it's not just cycling up and down, rotating through. Now it's kind of manual. This is all being controlled by the right thumbstick. If you use the left thumbstick, you can move the bars up and down. So you can use this to kind of set the actual kind of distance between them you want to set. Once you're happy with that, you can move the whole block up and down. So now you can scan from 32 to 60 exclusively by moving the left joystick. And same down 0 to 23. And it will move slightly with your movement here. Um, but it's all configurable by the two joysticks. As you can see, these jets are very low. This one is at 5,000 and 1,000 feet. Meaning that if I raise up beyond that, so now I'm scanning between 20, 18 and 37 now, they're gone. If I bring this back down, they start showing up again. So you have to be pointed at the right section of the sky, or else you're not going to see your targets. However, if you're in forward mode, they should generally always be there because it updates and scans the entire sky on its own. One more thing I'd like to showcase with the radar is about soft locking. Soft locking is when you just click on a target. Hard locking is when you double click and establish this kind of line showing that you're hard locked onto the target. So soft locking just kind of adds it to one, marks it there, and you can see it on your HUD. You've always been able to soft lock multiple targets, but now the soft lock indicator of showing which one you are selecting is this little star right here. So right now I'm selected to number one, I can switch over to number two. An interesting feature though, is that when it comes to firing radar missiles at a target, you used to have to fully lock on to it, meaning to do fully lock on it, then you could shoot, then you could unlock. As long as it stayed inside of your radar, it was okay, the missile would still track until it pulled. Now you don't have to actually hard lock initially to fire a missile. If you just have it soft lock and selected, you can just fire off fire off missile. Select it, fire it off. So you don't actually have to get a hard radar lock to fire a radar missile anymore. Now you just have to get a soft lock. So when you first open up the jammer, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see one or two, depending on how many jammers you have equipped, or none if you have zero. In this case, I have two equipped, so I see two sets of two. Each of these bars is an individual jammer node, meaning that you can actually jam up to four targets at a time if you're doing it right, using the right kind of targeting. One thing that's important to know is the difference between high and mid band. So they're used for different things. High band is used for AAA, the missile warning truck, 
and the AIM-120 internal radar, which is used when it goes pit bull and it uses, switches off of the actual plane radar to its own. So you can use high bands to jam the AAA missile warning and AIM-120 missiles. Mid band is best for jamming aircraft radar and SAM radars. Now the low band does exist, it's just not accessible in the 26, 45, or 55. It's only accessible in the EF-24 and also by the GECM truck. It's used to block communications and GPS signal. So that means that the low band can actually disrupt in-game voice comps and it can disrupt your GPS and potentially even the GPS of GPS-based munitions. Now there are three different ways you can set up targeting with the jammer. You have ARAD, targeting computer, and GPS. First, we will play around with the ARAD setting. So what you would do, and this would be easier with two screens, but I'm just showing it with one. You go to the ARAD, and we see multiple targets here. I'm going to select this target. And we'll go back to jammer, and you have this red one selected. You can click between them like this. But for the sake of this, we'll go ARAD here. And now this one has a little white box in it, indicating that there is a target associated with it. And when you click on it, it'll say DS, and it's on standby. And that DS is indicative of the DS that we select the dish site. So now if I click start, it's now in transmit mode. Now if we go to the ARAD, you'll see that I'm beaming a jamming signal at it. Now I'll show you real quick how you can do more. So we switch to the other one. Actually, we do this first. We go to jammer, sorry, ARAD. We'll select this one, go to jammer, have this one selected, ARAD. We select here, go to ARAD. So we'll select this one, jammer, and we will ARAD. Then we'll click over one more time, go back to the ARAD. Now we will select this one, we we'll go to the jammer and ARAD. So now I'm just going to cycle through these and start them all. So now I have four jammers running, and I'm jamming all four of these dish sites independently at the same time. Now if one dish site gets um, taken out in the sense that it doesn't have a launcher, it's not being used, it's not connected, and you don't want to do it, you have a couple options for undoing it. You can, go, you can select it and then hit stop, or you can use the power left and right to allocate all the power towards A in case you don't want to lose the lock but just want to reallocate power. You can switch power all the way from A to B and fully adjust it. Now you'll see I just lost A here. That's because it's just getting behind me. It's outside of the range of the jammer pod. Similar to how the targeting pod works, it kind of has to be in front of you. All right, so here I have an object targeted with the TGP. What you would do is once it's targeted, it's point onto it. Wherever that TGP points, you can set as a target. So it's marked as the TGP after I click TGP. Now I'll hit start and now I am jamming and you will see it on the ARAD that I'm launching out, my jammer. But now watch this. If I go back to the TGP and I acquire a different dish site, you'll notice that now I'm targeting that dish site. Wherever you move the TGP is wherever you're going to jam. You cannot target more than one at a time if you're using TGP mode. All right, next I will show you how to use the GPS targeting feature. So the two dish sites that we just showed you for the targeting pod, I have them selected here. So here's how this works. It's very simple, it's very similar to the ARAD, where you go into the GPS setting and you select in green the one you want to use. You go to Jammer and you click GPS. And now you can hit Start and the ARAD will show you I'm jamming this one. So now we go back to GPS, cycle down, go back to the jammer, switch to the other one, GPS, start. Now the ARAD will show me shooting both. So in theory, you can select up to four GPS targets at a time and jam up to four GPS targets at a time. Now I've lost lock with the GPS. But if you turn back around, similar to how the TGP works, where if you go out of its range, it'll remember where it is. If you turn back into it, it will start jamming again. So even if you pass over something, you want to come back around, you don't have to reacquire re or anything like that. You can just let it stay at running, and when it comes back into view and is jammable, it will start jamming again. One thing you'll also notice is while you're jamming, if you go to your radar, you will get a jammer on indicator. And that will persist. You will not see any targets until you stop jamming, and then your radar will go back to working again. 
So you gotta pick one. You can either jam or you can use your radar, but not both. So by now you're probably wondering, what does it look like when you get jammed? Well right now we're nose on each other in a multiplayer lobby. So by now I should be able to see him on my radar. He should be well within range, but I can't see him yet because the jamming is preventing me from even seeing him on radar. Now it's a double-edged sword because you can also lock on to this signature and fire a missile towards it. It's not perfect. It's not a direct guidance to your plane. It is still static, but it will point your, the missile in the direction of your plane and potentially allow it to maybe get enough signal, get enough radar through to be able to target you. Also, if you already have a hard lock before the jamming starts, in my experience, it was pretty much set that you would maintain your hard lock. Now, soft lock was immediately lost, and regaining soft lock and gaining a hard lock during a jam is pretty much impossible. But in my experience, when I had a hard lock and then he started jamming, it was as if he wasn't jamming at all. All right, that's about everything. Everything that you need to know about the new radar changes and the new jammer module coming in the 1.8 update. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If I missed anything or you know more about it than I do, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps.